Question number three, Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, what recent announcements has the government made on the next steps in its share offer programme, which is freeing up money to invest in new public assets without having to borrow from overseas lenders? Honourable Bill English, Speaker. Last night we announced the government had successfully issued 20 per cent of the shares in Air New Zealand. The shares were placed at $1.65 each. It was not a good deal and raised, Order. 300 and raised $365 million for taxpayers. The government has retained 53 per cent of the airline and when Air New Zealand resumed trading today, 88 per cent of the company was owned by New Zealanders. This is the latest step in the government's share offer programme, which has now raised almost $4 billion, which has been placed in the Future Investment Fund for investing in priority public assets. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, Simon O'Connor. How did the government ensure that New Zealanders were at the front of the queue for shares in Air New Zealand? Honourable Bill English. Shares were offered to New Zealand share brokers for on sale to New Zealanders. A condition of New Zealand brokers participating was that shares were allocated only to clients who met the New Zealand client test, having an IRD number, a New Zealand bank account and a New Zealand address. The government achieved its target of at least 85 per cent New Zealand ownership. And, that, and the opposition can't make up their mind whether that New Zealand ownership is rich mates of the National Party or poor mums and dads who've been ripped off. We've heard both and from the interjections today. Supplementary question. Order, order. <laughs> Supplementary question, the Honourable David Cundiff. Mr Speaker, to the Minister, why were the shares only available to a handful of select brokers at incredibly short notice while other Kiwi mum and dad investors were shut out? Honourable Bill uh, English. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, the nature of the offer was determined by the fact that the company is already listed on the stock exchange, and that means the mums and dads, whether they have a share broker or not, could buy shares any day of the week at the market price, cheap more cheaply than the price for which they were sold yesterday, and today they can buy shares at the market price. Uh, we are satisfied that we have achieved 85 per cent, in fact 88 per cent, New Zealand ownership. Point, point of order. order. Mr. Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable David Mr. Taylor. Speaker, I seek leave to table an email I received this morning that states, quote, as a current Air New Zealand shareholder, I was looking to buy more shares in the government sell down. I rang my bank, who I have shares order, through, order. and they said order, they were not getting order, involved and order, I could not purchase Order! Any. The email has been adequately described. I will put the leave. Leave is sought to table. Is there anything redacted from that email? Yeah. The question has been asked, is there anything redacted? The no order! Order! The name has been... Order! order. Mr. Speaker. Point of order, Mr. Le Speaker. Allow me to put the leave first. And then, if there's a point of order, I'll tell you. Leave has been sought to table yeah. an email. The name has been removed. There are no further uh, redact redactions. Is there any objection? No. Yes, there is. Sup supplementary. Mr. Uh, Speaker, uh, point, point of, of order. 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 A point of order has been called. Point Mr. of order. Speaker, I seek David your Cummins. assistance in this matter. The uh, Leader of the House. Uh, has seen fit to impugn the integrity of the member who has said that he has received an email. To prove it, I have sought to table the email, but the government has refused permission, refused leave for having that table. Order, order. I put leave. Leave was refused by the House. So that's any member has a right to deny leave. Is the member now raising a point of order that he's been offended? I, oh, well, if there was an offence taken, I'm sh unsure of the remark that could possibly have offended the member, but if, and I presume you're referring to an interjection from the Honourable Jerry Brownlee, can I ask Mr Brownlee if he um, offended the member, would he stand and withdraw that remark? Well, I, I don't think I offended him. Order. Yes, I don't. The member will I stand. Him out, Order. I the member will stand and withdraw the comment that offended the House and Mr Cunliffe. I uh, withdraw and apologise. Point of order. Point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, I wonder if you might uh, reflect on uh, exactly what's been asked for here and 
give the House a ruling as to where uh, a fence uh, intersects with being found out. Order, order, order. No, order. I don't need any. As I said, I didn't hear an offence that came from this side of the House that I would have thought offended the member. The member said he was offended. That is the end of the matter. If a member takes offence, he has a right to ask for that comment to withdraw and, uh, and apologise. There is that difficulty that I have to judge every time as to whether it's reasonable that the member was offended. On this occasion, because I did not hear the remark, I accepted the comments from the Hon. David Cunliffe. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, accepting that ruling, I wonder um, what reflection you might have for the House on when a senior member of the House directly challenges your ruling through a point of order. I have noticed you being very hard on members of this side of the House when they have done that and threatened them with ejection. I wonder if the same thing applies order. to the Leader of the order. House. No. I don't think the point made by Mr Brony was really, he was saying where, in, when some remarks were thrown in a political chamber, can they be considered offensive or not? That is a line ball call on many occasions. I have made the call that on this occasion I would accept that the member was offended and we moved from there. Uh, I cannot give a categoric assurance where a ruling might go next time. It depends on the remark. Point of order, Chris Hipkin. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the Speaker's rulings... Uh, the published speaker's rulings make it very clear that where a member is asked to withdraw and apologise, they are not then allowed to comment on that matter. That is the end of the matter. What Jerry Brownlee then did was raise another point of order where he commented directly on the matter. No, no. Well, I, I, I certainly accept that members should not then further uh, interject or refer once they've been asked to withdraw and apologise. That's accepted. But the member, Mr Brownlee, then raised a reasonable point. There are some remarks that are traded across this House that may to some person uh, take offence, because some people are more sensitive than others. That's something I've got to determine on the occasion. Question, oh, supplementary question Thank you. on uh, Simon O'Connor. Su Thank you, Mr question. Speaker. Uh, to the Minister, how has Air New Zealand performed under the mixed ownership structure introduced by the previous government? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I want to uh, acknowledge the foresight of the previous Labor government in setting up the mixed ownership model for Air New Zealand. Air New Zealand has performed very well under this structure and it would be regarded as probably the best managed small airline in the world. I also note that the previous government was flexible about the degree of ownership of Air New Zealand. The, the uh, airline was initially 82% owned by the New Zealand government. By the time we came to float 20%, it had reduced to 73% ownership, uh, which means the Labor government reduced, reduced government ownership in Air New Zealand by stealth, all without recognising that it was happening. We have no doubt that if the airline had been 100% government owned, it would not have performed near as well as it has. And on behalf of the taxpayer, I thank the Labor Party for their foresight. Supplementary question, the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Order. Order. Did you tell the, the Honourable member? Order. I've called the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Thank you. Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister, how can he claim that the asset sales program is a success when the three sales to date have raised one billion dollars less than he promised the New Zealand people? Honourable Bill oh, English. Mr. Speaker, no, that's uh, not correct. The proceeds, the proceeds will be less for the reason that one of the companies, Solid Energy, is simply not appropriate, uh, not appropriate for uh, public sale. Uh, we are very pleased to have just a shade under $4 billion in the bank, which we will be spending rebuilding Christchurch, building new hospitals, revamping modern learning environments all around New Zealand without having to kowtow to foreign bankers the way Greens and Labor want us to, so that our children Order. can have decent Order. schools. Order. Order. <laughs> Supplementary. Supplementary question, the Honourable Clayton. With Cochrane. respect to that last answer, how can he say the asset sales program is a success when the amount raised from the sell-down of Air New Zealand will only pay for 36 hours of government operational expenditure at the same time as the government continues to borrow $424 million per month 
and we net debt and we net debt has increased by 5.087 billion in a year. Is that kowtowing to foreign bankers or what? On oh, order, honourable speaker. Order, order. Mr. Speaker, the member has a right to ask the question. Now we've all got an answer, a right to hear the answer. Honourable Bill. Mr. Speaker, it's successful because tens of thousands of New Zealanders now have direct ownership, and probably a million have indirect ownership of these assets. And the government has four. The government has four billion dollars from New Zealanders who want to invest in large New Zealand companies which we will use to invest in decent public housing, modern public schools, uh, rebuilding Christchurch, while Labor and the Greens will have to go crawling to foreign bankers to get that money. We don't have to. We got it off New Zealanders. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the minister believe that there is public support for the asset sales program in light of polls showing two thirds opposed? And will he take the upcoming referendum on asset sales as a measure of public support? Honourable Speaker, Bill English. What I think is a fact, whether that member believes it or not, is there was public support for a government which transparently campaigned on selling assets. I also happen to think there's public support uh, for the government investing in public assets using money from New Zealanders who have the opportunity to invest in large New Zealand companies rather than doing what that member wants, which is to borrow even more from foreign bankers. And quite why he prefers to deal with foreign bankers rather than New Zealand savers is beyond me. Supplementary. Supplementary question. Su order. Order. Supplementary question, Simon O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, what reports has he seen supporting the government share offer in Air New Zealand? Honourable uh, Bill English. Mr. Speaker, there's been a range of uh, range of comment in the last uh, 24 hours indicating that the government uh, got a pretty good deal here. We've sold the shares for a dollar 65 which was the market price when normally this kind of sale uh, would involve a discount. Uh, so that means $365 million, which is now in the Future Investment Fund, which we will be able to use to invest in better classrooms for our children, a modern hospital in Christchurch. And we're able to do it without going and borrowing the money from foreign bankers like, the Lab like Labor and the Greens want to. Okay. Supplementary. Yeah, I'm just waiting for a, a bit of supplementary question. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Minister stand by his reported comments that he plans to take non-voters in the upcoming referendum as supporters of the asset sale program? Honourable uh, Bill English. Mr Speaker, I don't, um, I don't recall those comments. What I did say, I think, is that we would, we would expect a reasonably low turnout. Uh, I know that the opposition parties are disappointed there isn't marching in the streets about the sale of Air New Zealand, but then why would there be? The Labor government invented the mixed ownership model that was proven to be successful, and we built on that success. It's no wonder New Zealanders aren't quite as worried about this as the Greens and Labor, who seem more concerned about doing better business with foreign bankers uh, than giving New Zealanders the opposition opportunity to save. Supplementary question, Dr Russell Norman. Will, will the Minister accept that if there is a majority no vote in the upcoming referendum, the best opportunity for the people of New Zealand to have their voice on this specific issue, will he accept that the people of New Zealand do not support his asset sale program? Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, what's surprising is that for a party who say they believe in the voice of the people, they seem to regard the 2011 election as some kind of illegitimate intervention in the reign of the previous government. The fact is that we campaign transparently on this policy, and I invite that member in the next campaign to campaign transparently on the impact of his climate change policy on household costs. And we will hold them to the same standard as we met on asset sales. Order, Mr. Speaker. Order. 
Point of order, Dr. Russell. Mr. Order. Speaker, it was a simple question which the Minister did not address, which was would he take a majority no vote in the referendum as the people of New Zealand opposing order. the asset order. sales? He didn't even get anywhere near that question. Order. I invite the member to re-look at Hansard and have a look at the question. The question then talked about, is it not the best opportunity for New Zealanders to have their say? The minister then responded and said the best opportunity, in his opinion, was the election was held in 2011. The question was adequately addressed. Question number four, Honourable Annette King. Thank you.